Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Today, we're doing another moment of inertia problem. And today, the problem is going to be focusing on moment of inertia for an area by integration. So what this means from this drawing right here is pretty much we have an area, as we've covered previously, cross-sectional area, as we could think about it, represented by a function f of x. And pretty much, we're just taking the same process of determining moment of inertia about the x-axis and the y-axis to determine the section's cross-sectional resistance to bending. So in our problem here, it's asking the same question, except our problem is represented by the function y is equal to 2x to the 4. And if you haven't seen before my previous composite video for moment of inertia, I suggest you watch that first before hopping into this. But what do we remember from that video? As I mentioned already, moment of inertia refers to an area's resistance to bending about a specific axis. But we're able to use simple shapes in that composite video with predetermined moment of inertia values to calculate total moment of inertia about x or y. So when learning about moment of inertia by integration, we can actually take a deep dive into the meaning behind the formulas that derive the values for those simple shapes and how to solve for moment of inertia when it's based on a function here. And if we consider, let's say, uh, our cross section, using this example here first, uh, with respect to x, we can once again consider our area as a summation of infinitesimally small elements thanks to integration. And each of these strips contributes to the total moment of inertia by a quantity equal to y squared dA, and that's for ix's case, where y is being the length perpendicular to our reference axis. So x is our reference, and y is the distance away from that strip. And dA is representing that segment area. So this dark purple section is going to be one of the segments, and it's represented by that distance x, the length of that segment, times dy, which would be the width of that segment. Now our limits of integration are represented by the distance that our segment will cover in order to overlap this entire area. So from zero to B in this case would be our limits of integration here. And this allows us to solve for IX, but inversely, if we took strips par parallel to the Y axis, we would actually have IY. So for our problem here, let's take a look at IY and see what happens when we take strips parallel to the Y axis in order to solve for IY. All right, so I updated our drawing so that we are solving for IY, taking these parallel strips to the Y axis. And we could start off by just saying IY is equal to our limits of integration. And we already said that it's going to be from 0 to A, which is the distance that this strip will travel. So it's going to be from 0 to 1 for 1 meter. Okay? And the formula is simply as follows, as we talked about previously x squared dA, and we need to solve for dA first. So what is dA in this case? In this case, we have y dx. But why is this an issue? This is an issue because we have this dx element. And we know that when we're taking integration, we can't have uh, two separate variables when we're integrating for x, OK? We have to make them all in terms of either x or y. So the easiest thing to do in this case would be to replace this y for x values. And we already know that as this strip travels, the height of the strip is going to equate the value of the function y equals to 2x to the 4. So we can simply rep replace y equals to 2x to the 4 and plug that in for dA and say that dA is therefore equal to 2x to the 4 dx. Now we can sub that back into our equation and simply write that iy is now equal to 1 to 0 for our integration, x squared times dA, which is now 2x to the 4 dx. Distributing this, we are going to be left with 2x to the 6 dx. And now it's simple integration where we take out the two constant and we're left with integrating x to the six. And we know the rule, we've done it before. We're gonna have x to the seven over seven from one to zero. 
is solving for this, we are simply going to be left with 2 over 7. And that's going to be in meters to the 4. And if you wanted to solve for that, you could have the constant value of 0 0.286 meters to the 4. And that's simply solving for IY. Now, in this case, it's simple because we were able to take the value of y as the height of our strip at any point. However, when we get to, when we get to i at x, we're going to see that it's going to be a little bit different. All right, so now I've updated our drawing so that we can solve for i at x. And we can start off by doing the simple part, which is simply plugging into our formula for our limits of integration. So we know that in this case, we have our parallel segment, which is parallel to the x-axis, right? And the area that it's going to cover as it travels along the y-axis is going to be represented by the limit b. So we have 0 to 2 meters in this case, and we have y squared dA. Now, solving for dA is where things are going to get a little bit tricky. However, I'm going to explain it the best I can. So what is the problem here? Well, we know that we need to replace this x. And x has to be replaced in terms of y because we have this dy element that we need to account for in integration, okay? So let's say that we do what we did previously. We can simply rearrange this formula for the function and get it in terms of y so that we can plug it into this formula. So let's try that. So y is equal to 2x to the 4 as of right now. However, if we isolate for x, we would actually be left with y over 2 to the power of 1 over 4. But why does this not make sense? If we plugged in this x into this dA element, that is actually going to represent this segment with respect to y all the way to that function's value. So it's actually representing this strip here. Okay, So that means we have to actually say that this value is representing x prime in our case, which is what's marked here. So x prime is equal to y over 2 to the power of 1 over 4. Let me try to explain this in a different way as well. So let's imagine our strip all the way at the bottom closer to y equals 0. We know that the max size of our strip is going to be x equals to 1 right at that point. But as we move up, the strip is becoming smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And what is influencing that value to change. It's x prime. So now that we know this, we can actually say that the x value we need to replace in the dA formula is going to be the max size the strip can be, which is 1, subtracting that x prime that we saw for earlier, which is going to be y over 2 to the power of 1 over 4. And that will give us the dA that we're actually looking for. Okay. So now, hopefully that explains it well enough, we can plug this back into our dA. So dA is going to equal to 1 minus y over 2 to the power of 1 over 4, and then plug that back into our original formula. So ix is now going to equal this long drawn out formula here, which is y squared 1 minus y over 2 to the power of 1 over 4 dy. And we can now go ahead and distribute into this formula and solve it regularly using integration to get that ix value. So I'm going to skip ahead and you can follow through with my solution, um, but we'll get to the final answer and you can read through just to make sure we both made no errors, okay? And after all of that solving and integration, which we learned in Calc 1 and Calc 2, hopefully, we are left with a final answer for i at x equal to 0 0.205 meters to the power of 4. So I know these problems can seem a little bit tricky at first, but it's just understanding what value the function is giving you when you plug it in, and if it actually represents dA when you use that substitution method that I showed you, okay? So I hope this video helped to understand that little bit of confusion there. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching.